Hey, 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 good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to give it a minute and see if we get some viewers here. Give it a minute. I think I'm going to have to do something to make Friday's shows a little more exciting to get some more people to come on. Uh, looks like uh, everybody gets so busy on Friday. I'm just give it a few. Maybe some people got things they had to do real quick. I don't know. It is Friday, and uh, when it's Friday, it's Friday. It's busy for them, so let's see what happens. Well... Well, good morning. Welcome to Grace Time. I'm Leland Ship, and I am the pastor of Grace Place Assembly in Inverness, Florida. And good morning. And and uh, how we doing this morning, y'all? Uh, it is Friday. We made it. We made it to today. So if you how you doing? Let me know in the comments. Uh, just to let you know, as I announced yesterday, that they there will be no racing this Saturday. So that may, that means currently, unless they change something, that the Grace Place number 94 race car will not run until Saturday, June 11th. So Sport Harley Wilson will be working on that car. We'll be working on it to get it ready for that race. Uh, and if you know of any kids that would love to come out and have that experience, feel free. A lot of people are looking into it and letting me know. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't want to fill up the slots. We can do more than one child at a time. It's just up to you when you can bring and when they can be there. But let me know. I'll go ahead and schedule them up, and we'll hook them up. Uh, the other thing is, is come. If you're near Inverness, Florida, uh, this Sunday, come uh, fellowship with us uh, 10 a.m. at Grace Place. And uh, I will share with you that at Grace Place, we have something in the works for the month of December, which is going to be really awesome. And uh, I can't spill the specifics yet, but uh, they will be coming. And as soon as I know, I will let you know. And we also need to add a young man named A.J. Waller to our prayer uh, request or our prayer list. Uh, A.J., he's a fellow race car driver and... He is also battling cancer, and he had his port removed yesterday. But we need to pray for his healing overall. And uh, so add A.J. Waller to your prayer request, if you would, please. And with that, I'm going to get cranking on the video this morning uh, into our devotional. And I will tell you that life is a bunch of decisions. And... <laughs> Life is experiencing or living with the results of those decisions that we've made. And if you think about it, you have been making decisions all of your life. And in fact, just today alone, you have made a ton of decisions already. And you will make many more decisions before the day is over. But what is the most important decision that you will ever make? It is the decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I can tell you that was the best uh, decision that I ever made, surrendering my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and accepting Him as my personal Lord and Savior. And if you have not, you should. Because once you do that, you one, <laughs> you, you are saved and that promises you uh, a heavenly place in eternity, right? But the other thing is, is that you will come to know more peace, more love, more confidence. And I could just keep going with the list. I mean, who wouldn't want those things in their lives? So if you haven't made that decision, you need to do that. You need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. 
Uh, and here's another question for you this morning. When you are having to make an important decision, what do you do? I mean, do you just quickly make that decision? Uh, do you put anything into that decision making? Do you have an objective when you're making a decision? Do you have any plans that go with that decision? I mean, we plan to go on vacation and we we book plane and book and buy plane tickets. We book and reserve places to stay. We spend an enormous amount of time thinking about our vacation. We save money for our vacation. Uh, we plan on what to take. We plan which suitcases. We make the decision which suitcases we're going to take. What which clothes are we going to take on our vacation? And in fact, some of us even go out and buy a whole new wardrobe of clothes just to go on vacation. So who? And then we make a decision also who will go on our vacation. There's a lot of us want to go alone on our vacation. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, my point is we have an objective when we make that decision to go on vacation and then we plan for that objective. We put time, effort, energy, even our hard-earned money into that plan to just go on vacation. But the question is, are you intentionally planning when making life decisions? Every decision that you make can and will impact your life one way or another. And, and I'm going to share some verses out of the book of Colossians this morning first, and then I'm going to talk about the book of Corinth, 1 Corinthians, or Corinthians. And so I'm going to turn to Colossians chapter 2 and uh, verses 6 through 7. Colossians chapter 2 and verses 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it, with thanksgiving and remember these verses we've talked about these verses in the past week week and a half and we've studied them and we we should uh, understand how they apply to us but in the book of Corinthians the Apostle Paul shares great truths which we can utilize in our decision-making for example 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 23, it tells us, I do all things for the gospel's sake. Another one is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse, verse 24, let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. These assist us in making godly decisions. And we make decisions, uh, and when we make those kind of decisions, we should consider the impact of our decisions on others. Paul also shares with the Corinthians that everything that they do is to be done for the glory of God. Despite what many people think today and how they live, okay, this is the big thing that catches up a lot of people looking and looking into other people's lane or getting on their frequency and observing how they're living and, 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 and beside, it doesn't matter despite what these people think. We are not here to please ourselves, you see. So, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 tells us, Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through him whom we live. So, what am I getting at here with this? We are going to talk about how God created us, right? So God created us, and we are here to glorify him. And are there any decisions at this point <laughs> that in your, your life that you wish you would have planned making on this basis instead of how you made them? And I'm going to tell you, I already know. Sure there are, because we all have them. But the point is to gain an understanding of just how important decisions are in our lives we should treat decision making just like our vacations we should put a lot of time and effort and energy behind them in resources right we should think about them plan them accordingly and ask ourselves some questions and i'm going to give you a list of questions this morning should i make this certain decision question mark should i engage in this certain activity question mark 
Who all does this decision impact? I mean, we cannot only consider what is good for us, but how our decision is going to impact others. Uh, another question is, how will this decision affect my testimony? How will this decision impact the gospel? We should consider these things. I mean, as I ponder my life, I know there are many decisions I wish that I could go back and, and maybe utilize and probably really utilize these questions in my own decision making in my younger days, for sure. But here is a great question. How does this decision glorify God? That is a phenomenal question to ask when making decisions. Now, there are those who will hear these questions and say, yeah, right. If I ask those questions, I will never have any fun. Well, my response is, I assure you this, if you ask these questions and intentionally shape your decisions to these questions, you will minimize your pain suffering, trouble, and ramifications of making bad decisions. I mean, how much fun is it living in the ramifications of making bad decisions? So, but as Christians, we, are, we always should be utilizing these questions because Paul says, there are things I should do and there are things I should not do when it comes to advancing the gospel. Paul is our pattern in this time of grace. He is our pattern for making decisions. Remember, we are not supposed to be of this world. We studied that. We're not to be of the chasing the, the course of this world, right? We are different, so we should be utilizing these questions in our decision making. There are people in this world who are making their decisions based on horoscopes, on fortune tellers, and all kinds of wild things. God sees us as adults as adult sons and daughters in Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 6 but when the fullness of the time had come God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons full grown and because you are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying out Abba Father uh, so kind of like a term of endearment, if you will. And he and so God expects us to make adult decisions. And, and, and he does kind of, not necessarily solely on our own, but on our own to be adult, right? And by utilizing the wisdom we have. And so are, are you seeing how important our past grace times are really are with what we shared about having a disciplined Bible study life and in our lives and or how about how important a disciplined prayer life is uh, how about attending a good bible uh teaching and preaching uh church how important that is um and i just want to share uh uh acts 16 let's go to the book of acts acts chapter 16 and verses 1 through 3 acts 16 verses 1 through 3 and this is going to be dealing with Paul here. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain di disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him, because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And so Paul made a decision here, as we know, that to replace Mark with Timothy, because he came recommended by men Paul trusted. So, and we should make adult-based decisions, right? And we can get a recommendation, so we shouldn't help to assist us in making these adult decisions. We should get recommendations from others as well, uh, based on the good counsel now from brothers and sisters in Christ. They can assist us when making major decisions in our lives, especially those who may be a little older, a little wiser, uh, you know, older and wiser brother and si brothers and sisters in Christ are always good people 
to share, oh, I've got to make this decision, what do you think? And it's not asking them what would you do, but just seeing what they think about it. Now you, do, now you see the importance, right, of when I talk about having fellowship with other members of the body of Christ in a good Bible teaching and pe preaching church, how important that can be, not to mention that when you are fellowshipping like that frequently with those kind of people, the accountability and the encouragement that you will be able to gain and utilize in your life, you see. That's exactly what Paul's kind of saying here. So I hope that this message this morning has kind of helped you and, and given you some things uh, to think about when making decisions. And I, and I pray that you're able to make good, solid, sound, and faithful decisions in the future. Amen? Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for this day, and Lord, we thank you for your Son and, and what he accomplished for us at, at Calvary. We pray that you give us wisdom, patience, and strength when we have to make life decisions. We pray that we always utilize these questions that we learned about this morning to assist us in the all-important decision-making in our lives. We pray that we all have a safe and blessed weekend coming up. And it is in the Lord Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here on Grace Time. Uh, I really appreciate it. Please share this video with family and friends. Uh, have at it. Uh, comment uh, all the time. Whatever you want to do. Share it. Like it. Uh, and if you are around Inverness, Florida this Sunday, come visit us at Grace Place. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. And uh, it's a laid back situation. Uh, and... Uh, and there's a lot of good things, a lot of great people, and come fellowship with us. I will be back here Monday morning, good Lord willing, at 10 a.m. here on Grace Time. And until next time, may God bless you.